Good afternoon. This is Ken Long from Tortoise Capital with a review of the weekend trading plan for March 10th, 2012. Pardon the congestion in my voice. I'm suffering through a head cold right now. We have a bullish quiet market. That's at 65 out of 100 on a weekly RSI of 14. Uh, 84 out of 100 on the 10 day NDX were slightly overbought. Percent stretch above the 200 day moving average at 9.79% is bullish and coated green, so exceptionally strong. The 50 day moving average slope, however, has backed off to 0.84%, and although that's still bullish, it is slightly weaker than last week because it's coated white. ADX has pulled back to 30.1, still strong, but nowhere near as upwardly trending as it was uh, last week when it was about 36. ATR percentage at 0.87 percent remains uh, exceptionally quiet. So we have a bull quiet market that's overbought on a short-term basis. The 26 ETF portfolio was holding the Q's, financials, and Brazil. 13 ETF, the Q's, U.S. mid caps and U.S. large caps, with the next reevaluation of both, both portfolios due on or about 1 April. In the ETF2 weekly rebalancing, the theoretical exposure remains at 100%, model portfolios at 100%. No change to the holdings, the stops are to be adjusted upwards. This weekend, uh, I'm not ho hosting the live uh, webinar, I'm simply recording this one ahead of time due to a competing engagement. Next up is a review of the blended monthly rebalancing portfolios sorted by the strength column. You can see that the U.S. is still on the top with the top four positions. Uh, treasuries and the internationals are uh, lagging. In the 26 ETF portfolio, again, it's the U.S. on top with uh, Brazil and emerging markets uh, moving to the top as well. And uh, internationals, agriculture, gold, Swiss franc at the bottom of the list. Market health check. The vertical blue lines represent 10, 20, and 30 days worth of look back. Horizontal purple line at 137 is the swing high of the past uh, 12 months. You can see we've tested it. We pulled back earlier this week and then had a nice channeling trade. Uh, in effect, the uh, black center line is the 30-day regression line. The outer black lines are the regression channel formed by the maximum excursion from the regression line during the pullback period, which has happened twice, once in late January and then again this week. Horizontal red lines represent significant uh, support levels from previous pullbacks. The two black boxes represent a 5 and a 10% pullback from the swing high. Any pullback from 0 to 5% we would consider to be noise or anything back to about 130. Between 130 and 124 would be considered a correction in a bull market. Price is right at the regression line. It's hovering right on the 10-day moving average in green. Uh, and it's better than the 50-day moving average. You see the thin red line and then the 200-day moving average represented by the shaded blue area uh, where it meets the white. So we have a uh, normal bull quiet market that it just has had one pullback, the first one that it's had really in the last 30 days, uh, and it is back to retesting the high at 137. Um, you see ADX coming down, so that little bit of weakness uh, causes it to detrend a little bit, but still rated strong. And now we'll see if there's enough energy to get through 138. Uh, on this next push. The uh, Williams percent R is back into overbought conditions. The percent price oscillator has bottomed uh, the jaws open to the downside during this weakening process here. Uh, potentially ready to turn and roll back higher. Uh, so we'll see if there's any continuation momentum. The slope of the 30-day regression line has pulled back to still positive about 0.18. Um, and it's got room to regain its strength if it if it goes forward from here. From the ETF2 report, all 10 segments of the world market model are on a buy signal, so we're still at 100% invested, 0% cash. In this bull quiet market, it's being led by the U.S. compared to the rest of the world. 
inside the U.S. The strength is technology, large caps, mid caps, and small caps. Technology and the spiders are the two strongest sectors in the world. Uh, the Euro-Asia blend and the European 350 are the two weakest. <coughs> in the world market model, you can see all of the U.S. is above average in the white, and the NASDAQ, the large cap growth, is exceptionally strong. Latin America emerging markets and everything in the Western Hemisphere except Canada are above average. Uh, Japan, Asia less, Japan are below average. You can see the usual leaders among uh, the Asian countries, South Korea, Taiwan, Singapore, Malaysia, Hong Kong, India, China, Australia lagging. Uh, only Germany uh, exceptionally strong among in Europe. Uh, laggard is Spain. Um, and then you can see that it's the growth on uh, sectors are still strong in the U.S. and globally with uh, tech, financials, and uh, industrials. Seeing a little bit of weakness creeping in here on materials and energy that could be a buy on dip opportunity. Gold, silver uh, had a pullback this week. Uh, oil is above average. U.S. real estate above average. The top 30 ETFs in the in the ETF2 database dominated by the same names home construction, biotechs, regional banks, uh, U.S. retail. Among the Dow 30, looking at their blended six and three month relative strength in the strength column, Bank of America continues at the top, Home Depot, JP Morgan, Microsoft, and Disney round out the top five. Five weakest being Hewlett Packard, Alcoa, Johnson Johnson, Coke, and McDonald's. Uh, I would look at McDonald's and Coke as opportunities to buy strength on a dip. ETF liquidity, just for your reference, these are the most liquid ETFs based on daily dollar volume, and you can see their relative um, intraday volatility here. The VIX is now under 5% intraday, a sign of the quietude in the market. We'll shift now to uh, the daily. I won't read the top bar again. Uh, on the <coughs> gap statistic, 12 times, 8 and 4, in the last 30 days the market has gapped down. Four of those times the gap down has continued to fail for an additional average of minus 0.28. Eight times out of 12 the gap down has been followed by a reversal and a close higher than the open with an average follow through at 0.44. Uh, so now we're starting to see the gap down start to fail, whereas in the previous 30 days that has not been the case. Uh, 18 times the market has gapped up. Seven of those times the gap up has failed and uh, closed lower with a minus 0.39 average follow through. 11 times out of 18 the gap up has been followed by an additional gain of on average 0.33%. You can see that the uh, on the 10-day NDX time series the market this week pulled back to oversold conditions, making, making a nice channeling and overreaction system entry and uh, a nice follow through this week. No signals in overreaction or channeling. You can see the pivots for reference. The decline in volatility has stabilized down here about around 0.87%. Um, you can see the weakness in the trending uh, is pulled back to 30 there was a time earlier this week when um, the bull, uh, the bolts actually lost control to the bears momentarily, but had a nice surge at the end of the week. 10-day um, max pain candidates, the usual suspects, Hewlett Packard, Alcoa, Caterpillar, um, Boeing, and ExxonMobil. Uh, pattern setups, 551Ws in blended commodities, Europe, Euro-Asia blend, and Latin America. I'd be looking carefully at, at the ILF. Uh, if we see continued strength on the rebound in emerging markets in Latin America. Channeling signals in ExxonMobil and McDonald's. Uh, plenty of 2 to 1 reward to risk ratios still available based on the auto framer technique. You can see a summary of the Dow. Uh, the Dow tactical report. <coughs> Excuse me. 
the all five of the Max Payne range compressions plus McDonald's offer better than two to one on the auto framer, so that's worth noting. Uh, quite a few ETFs offering the same auto framer advantage here, or better than two to one, are highlighted, including all five of the uh, top five max pain range compressions, and that's mostly dominated right now by the commodities. Brazil would be of a lot of interest to me right now. Sold off on Friday into the close. Uh, it's been one of the stealth gainers and still offers a 2.4 reward to risk, so there may be a chance to buy some strength on a dip there. Um, you can see on the 30-day regression line, zoom in, um, the size of the pullback uh, away from the regression line and the nice uh, move to rejoin it. You can see the uh, slope of that regression line has rolled over and is coming back towards the average of the last 180 days. And the percent st stretch above the 200-day moving average has suffered a little bit at uh, one and a half standard deviations above normal. This is a natural place for the market uh, to be pausing and getting into something like sideways conditions. Uh, just for your reference, um, the frog candidates, uh, almost half of the candidates between the Dow and the ETF 30 are above the critical 3.0, including a couple interesting ones here, General Electric and Boeing. The uh, standard deviation on General Electric only five cents, uh, so it's been steadily marching north. <coughs> Fail stat for your reference. I won't I won't cover that any further. Signal to noise ratio. Uh, the VIX has been very directional. It's at the top of the signal to noise ratio. Uh, it has as has Europe and silver. Both of those have been uh, also uh, very tradable. Signal to noise ratios are being dominated in here by the uh, by the commodity complex. Uh, and I like that MDY is still among the leaders. Uh, that's everything I want to cover on this uh, weekend report review. Uh, we have more of the same. I think there's a good chance for buy on dip opportunities continuing to prevail here and if we get a move through 138 the market will have uh, found its support after a micro pullback and that will bode well for the uh, for the weeks ahead it's Ken Long from Tortoise Capital keep your risk measured and your powder dry